Hi, Jim Humphrey from Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training here today, and we're going to have a look at the insides of a Winchester Model 62A. The Winchester Model 62 was a very popular uh, pump action rifle, initially built as the Model 62, then later as the 62A, uh, and it came in a uh, gallery gun variant as well. Uh, they were made uh, from 1932 to 1959, and they made over 400,000 of them. This was the 62A, it was manufactured in 1942. Uh, we can tell it's an A version at a glance because the action handle is a little longer than the earlier version. This is about 8 inches long. Uh, the A version came in 1940 after they made some changes to the uh, bolt. Uh, these rifles were chambered for 22 short, long and long rifle. Uh, the, with the exception, the gallery guns were only uh, chambered 22 short. As always, before working on any firearm, I'm going to check and double check the firearms unloaded and remove all live ammunition from the work area. The 62s were built as a takedown rifle, which meant uh, was by simply unscrewing single screw uh, and pulling the two halves apart you could break it down into a much smaller package for transportation and storage. This simply starts by removing the uh, slide cover which is held in place by this uh, stop screw. And the slide cover just slides out. The magazine tube is uh, removed by knocking out this pin in the rear magazine ring. It's a groove pin so I have to be careful and uh, make sure I knock it out from the uh, smaller uh, smooth end. Uh, this releases the uh, magazine, which can be pulled straight out, and the action slide handle comes out, and the action slide. With the action slide removed, I can then uh, remove the bolt by pressing on the firing pin and lifting up on the front of the bolt, and sliding the bolt to the rear. Alternatively, to uh, remove the bolt, I can just lift up on the action slide. Uh, that unlocks it from the bolt, and then I can remove the bolt in the same manner, pressing the firing pin, lift up in the front. The action slide can be removed from the action slide handle by removing these two screws and just uh, pulling it out. Now the parts of the uh, bolt include this uh, firing pin stop and the on the other side here the extractor. Uh, to remove those in the firing pin I need to knock out uh, these three pins. If I look on the bottom of the bolt, uh, I can see there's three holes there for the pins. And uh, as much as I like to use brass punches, these were pretty tough pins. I had to go with steel uh, to get them to move. Uh, the firing pin stop is held in place by uh, two identical uh, pins. And with those pins removed, the uh, firing pin stop just uh, slides out. This one was a little gummy, so I had to tug on it just a little bit. With the firing pin stop removed, the uh, firing pin and firing pin spring uh, will slide out the back of the bolt. The extractor is held in place with a uh, single pin. It was uh, pretty tough, so I set it up in the padded vise. Uh, with that pin at least partially removed, I can just uh, slide the extractor out. Okay, so I'll take a moment here to review some nomenclature. Uh, we've removed the slide cover, the action slide, the extractor, uh, the breech bolt, uh, the firing pin stop with its two pins, and the uh, firing pin and spring. Uh, the trickiest part about reinstalling the uh, extractor and the firing pin stop was uh, lining up the holes with the pins. Uh, so I used a little bit of a, a brass uh, wire here to get a, as a guide to line things up. Considerably, uh, that's the extractor spring loader side to compress it just a little bit. Same thing on the uh, 
fire pin stop. Of course, fire pin goes in first, and the fire pin stop goes in on top of it. And I'll use that uh, same wire guide to uh, line the holes up. Cut into the uh, edge of the magazine tube is this little groove, and that's where the retaining pin has to be put through. So that's going to be rotated and then lined up uh, next to the barrel. So when I put the pin through, it goes through that little retaining groove. Now remember the pin's grooved, so I had to put the skinny end of the pin in first, and then I can drive it home. And the final stop is to uh, slide that. Uh, slide cover back in and uh, reinstall the slide cover stop screw. And to test that uh, everything moves smoothly and to distribute the lubricant, I have to uh, press the firing pin in to get the bolt to unlock before I pull back on the slide. The stock is attached to the uh, receiver or what they call the guard of this rifle uh, with a single screw. This is called the upper tank screw. With that removed, I can just slide the uh, stock off. The assembly screw is removed by knocking out a very small pin right here and then the, the screw will come out. This retaining pin is a uh, tapered pin so I have to be careful to drive it out from the small end. So when I reinstall this pin I'll be careful to orient it correctly. The only thing else tricky about getting this assembly apart is the uh, main spring or the hammer spring they call it and it's pretty common with coil springs and higher firearms like this you'll find a hole in the guide and you can put a little cock the hammer in this case put a little brass pin in there and then release the hammer and it holds the tension on the spring so it can be removed so the rest of the parts of this uh, something just come out by knocking pins out uh, and uh, it's pretty straightforward so we'll uh, then get right back into the assembly here first we'll review the parts so we've got the assembling screw bushing uh, the assembling screw and that uh, little tiny pin that goes with it. Uh, the carry lever spring uh, screw and the, and the spring and the lever. And then the carrier. And then the guard. Uh, the hammer. The trigger with the trigger spring and trigger pin. And then the hammer up spring abutment. The hammer spring and the hammer spring abutment guide inside it. And then the upper tank screw. Now on the uh, carrier, I did not remove this uh, cartridge stop because the pin for it was staked into place and uh, I would have had to uh, damage the part to remove it. Uh, reassembly is uh, pretty straightforward. I take the carrier lever and I've got the pin started on the other side and I drive that pin through. The carrier lever spring uh, when installed engages that carrier lever and gives that carrier lever a little uh, return spring reflex there. So it's a little bit tricky to get the assembling uh, screw bushing back in place. It's got a shoulder on it. And so I drop the hammer and the trigger and the carrier in place and that bushing so it holds them together. Everything has to be aligned uh, to, for it to go through smoothly. So I, I use the butt end of a drill bit of just the right size to line all the parts up tap on that bushing and uh, get that shoulder to seat inside the uh, guard. The trigger spring I want to just set inside uh, loosely on top of the trigger. There's a little indentation for the spring there until I get the uh, 
hammer spring abutment uh, in place, and it's what holds the, hammer, the trigger spring. I'm going to start the uh, hammer spring abutment uh, retaining pin in this hole so that I can uh, have enough hands to do this when I get everything in place. So in this hammer spring uh, abutment guide rod on the end of it, there's a little round nub. And on the bottom of the abutment plate itself, uh, there's a dentation for the, that's for the trigger spring. And the nub at the top goes up into this uh, indentation in the hammer. And then I gotta put the other piece in the spring. So all pieces have to be lined up as that hammer abutment guide uh, goes in. Now I've still got that little piece of brass wire in place to hold the spring so I'll have to do that at the same time. And once I get it in place, I just press it in, a little bit of pressure on my thumb, and then I can tap that retaining pin in place and it holds everything uh, where it's supposed to be. With the trigger spring now trapped by the hammer spring abutment plate, I can compress the trigger spring by pushing up the trigger and then hold it in place with an alignment pin. And I take the trigger pin and drive it through and push out that alignment pin. So that leaves the assembling screw and its uh, tiny tapered pin. So I have to be sure to insert that pin in the correct orientation. So a little end first and then drive it from the uh, large end. When I drive it through, I have to drive it through just the right amount of distance so that the assembling screw can be pulled back inside the bushing. the assembling screw back in place. I can now reconnect the two halves and install the uh, stock. Okay, with a quick function check, make sure everything's operating smoothly, I'd say my work here is done. Well, I found that interesting. Hope you did too. I'm Jim Humphrey from Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. Enjoy your firearms and be safe out there. Thanks for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe. Thanks. <laughs>